Hi there, welcome to this week's Video Weekend Warrior. I'm Mike Watchmaker, National Handicapper for Daily Racing Forum. The three races I'm going to talk about this week are the Grade 1 Man of War Stakes at Belmont Park, one of five stakes races on, on the program there. I'm going to talk about the feature at Churchill Downs, the Mamzelle Stakes, and also the headliner at Arlington, the Hanshin Cup. But let's begin with the Man of War Stakes. We have an eclectic field of nine here, which really means that there's a lot of options uh, for the betting public. Um, but while there are a lot of viable options in this race, to me, Magic One is is much, much the best horse in this race. I could be wrong, but that's the way I see the race. Uh, and the reason why I say that is I'm going to forgive her last start, a fifth in the Dubai Shima Classic, most recently because she was simply well overmatched in that race. But two starts back, uh, she finished a very willing second in the Pegasus World Cup turf. Uh, she finished second uh, in this day uh, to uh, Bricks and Water, who has since won two stakes races and is clearly uh, the best turf horse in the country at the moment. I think it's notable that uh, Magic One finished ahead uh, in this race, edging out for second, uh, finished ahead of Dunout the Prince, who came back to win um, the Grade One Makers 46. And the thing that was interesting about Magic One's performance in the Pegasus. World Cup turf is that that race was at a mile and three sixteenths, and I do believe that that is much shorter than what Magic One really wants. She's going a mile and three eighths uh, on Saturday in the Man of War. I think that distance is much, much better for her. Uh, she was a narrowly beaten second in two Group One races uh, last year uh, in uh, France uh, at distances around this. I think the added distance helps her, and I just think. She's kept better company. It is simply the best horse in this race, but I'm hoping that the price will be palatable. Uh, let's move on to the Mamzelle Stakes, and I have no concern about the price uh, that I'm going with, uh, the price horse I'm going with in this spot, because I do believe Kim K will be a big price in this spot. I do admit that two of Wesley Ward's horses in here are going to take a lot of beating. Uh, certainly Abyssidian, uh, a most impressive winner of her turf debut, two starts back at Gulfstream, and then uh, a very good third uh, against males in a stake race at Keeneland. Most recently, back in with Phillies. Certainly, she can uh, win this race. So can Chelsea Cloisters. Chelsea Cloisters were second against males uh, in the uh, new Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint uh, last fall at Churchill Downs. And uh, although she finished third uh, in the turf stakes at uh, Keeneland in her three-year-old debut, she was coming off a five-month layoff and was not helped by a five-wide trip around the racetrack. Those two horses are going to be very tough to beat here. But Kim K just has a couple of angles here that I can't resist. And knowing she's going to be a big price, I had to go with her. Number one, I'm not concerned about the layoff. She hasn't run since uh, finishing a distant 13th in the Alcibiades stakes. Um Obviously, this filly uh, is was well regarded as a two year old last year. They really paid up for her uh, in a two at a two year old sale. Uh, they, she was purchased for three hundred thirty five thousand dollars. I'm not concerned about the layoff because Peter Miller is very her trainer is very good with layoff horses. I'm not concerned about her making her first start on turf because Peter Miller is very good with that too. Uh, also because. Uh, Kim K is out of a mare who was a stakes winner on turf and a mare who won $430,000 racing on turf. So Kim K's got the pedigree to do this. And Peter Miller's got also big numbers, flatbed profit with layoff horses like this, flatbed profit with first time turf horses, and most notably flatbed profit and, and good numbers in turf sprints like this. Uh, given Kim K's pedigree and her connections, I just think that um, she's a price horse worth taking a shot with in the Mamzelle Stakes. Uh, let's wrap it up with the Hanshin Cup at Arlington. Um, and the big question in this race is really, what do you do with Richie's in the house? I mean, this is uh, 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 an undeniable synthetic track freak. And of course, he'll be running on Arlington's synthetic main track in this spot. Uh, he's eight for 10 in his career with two seconds on synthetic. And uh, very notably, he's three for four in his career at Arlington. Uh, on Arlington's main uh, main synthetic racetrack with one second. He's uh, very fast early, and he's got buyer figures that are absolutely good enough to win this race. But the thing of it is, is that this is a, a one-mile race, and Richie's in the house is a big, big question mark going this one-mile distance. And I also think at some point in this race, 
Uh, he's going to uh, get some pace pressure from Gone Ghost. I, I want horses that can get the distance and come from off the pace in here. And the two most logical ones are nonetheless and Lanier. Um, and even though nonetheless beat Lanier in two stakes over the winter on Turfway's synthetic main track, I'm going with Lanier to turn the tables here for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, when Lanier was caught late by nonetheless in those two stakes races, and what we're looking at one of them, the Kentucky, uh, uh, Kentucky Cup Classic Cup, um, those were longer races going two turns. I do believe Lanier is better suited to an extended one-turn race like this. And I also believe Lanier is going to get burst jump on nonetheless in this race. I actually think Lanier might actually pull the perfect stocking trip behind um, uh, a pace that's going to be quick with Richie's in the house and, and uh, gone ghost getting up and pressing it probably in the interior fractions. So I'm looking for Lanier at the better price uh, to beat nonetheless and get the money in the Hanshin Cup. That's the way it looks for this week's Video Weekend Warrior. Good luck.